What do you need to know about raising Cooney Coonies? Today I'm going to have a chat to you about what I have learned in the last year about raising our Cooney Cooney pigs. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakaka Valley and today I'm talking about our Cooney Cooney pigs and everything you need to know about looking after them. And these two noisy ladies are destined for our freezer. However, Cooney Coonies are not a common choice for raising for pigs for meat. I'm just going to feed these guys so they leave us alone. Now there's lots of reasons why we have chosen to raise Cooney Cooney pigs. There's also a lot of reasons why most people don't raise Cooney Cooney pigs. I'm going to explore some of the different reasons. So one of the things with Cooney Coonies is that they're really small, uh, which for us is great. They're small and they're friendly, uh, which means that they're really good. They're safe around children. You can even keep a boar around children. Um, they're very, very friendly. Um, they're easy to handle. They generally will come when you call them, especially if they're used to you calling them for food. They are really slow growing, which means traditionally for meat they're not a great option. However, they can also be raised solely on grass. You can keep a sow and two boar, uh, a sow and two boars, a boar and two sows, and breed your own quite easily. Um, and for us, for that reason, that's why we have decided to keep them for meat here, um, because we can breed our own. So, and we have lots of grass, so it doesn't matter. If they do take that much longer to grow out, um, usually you don't start considering butchering them until they're about nine months old and actually 18 months to two years is a much better size. These two ladies over here, they're just a year old, maybe a year and a little bit. And we have decided that we're going to start feeding them some grain ration twice a day to try and get them a bit bigger before winter comes and we will process them before winter. So. It is what it is, living on a farm and we do eat meat so we like our animals to be happy. We know that they're healthy um, and they just have one bad day. Well actually when they're killed on site it's not even one bad day, it's half a bad second. So um, these guys live the life. They have grass as tall as they are, as you can probably see from here. And Cooney Coonies love to eat grass. It's what they grow best on. If you try and grow them on just grain, you'll end up with a really fatty, slow growing pig anyway. Um, so they'll get really fat, but still not grow any faster, not really. One of the main reasons people don't keep Cooney Coonies for meat is because they are really fatty. However, being a lard pig, I personally think that's a really good thing. We like our bacon fatty, we cook in fat, um, and I can use the lard for making soap and that sort of thing. So for us, them being fatty is not actually a downside. Now, if you want to know more about why we've chosen Cooney Coonies and a little bit more about the ups and downs of them, I'll put a link to the video I've done up here or up here. I think it's up there. Um, anyway, I'll put a link for it up there for you. Um, today, I'm going to talk more about actually caring for Cooney Coonies and what you can expect if you have Cooney Coonies. Um, you can keep Coonies as a pet. I know of quite a few people, we live in New Zealand where Coonies are from and uh, they have become quite a common pet, um, especially out in the countryside. Uh, Coonies are as intelligent as dogs, you can teach them to sit, you can teach them to come, they'll roll over, they'll do all sorts of tricks. I've even seen one that uses a slide, he goes up onto a higher bank um, and then to get back down they set up a wee kid slide and he uses that to get himself back down. Uh, people do keep them inside, they'll come inside and lie in front of the fire like a good dog and ask to go out when they need to go to the toilet. So Coonies are quite trainable, they will live a similar length to a dog, in fact some will even live longer. Uh, it's, they have an expected age of sort of 10 to 15 years and some can live right up to about 20 as long as they're kept in really good health. The trick with coonies is to avoid getting them too fat, so you want to be careful what you feed them. They do largely eat grass. If you are giving them grain, especially over winter if your grass isn't great, 
um, they'll need sort of about a kilo to a kilo and a half so two to three pounds of uh, grain each day um, usually split into a, two meals because otherwise they'll spend the evening crying that they're starving hungry which clearly they're not but they'll think they are Kenny Kennies are really easy to look after they need somewhere to be able to eat somewhere to be able to sleep um, some fences that will keep them in which can be a bit of a challenge I'll show you shortly what we've got for fencing and other than that other than that you need to worm them once or twice a year and occasionally they'll need their hooves trimmed they are really low maintenance and very easy to care for now the one thing that attracted us to Cooney Coonies which um, turns out was a little bit of a misnomer is was that they don't root what we have found is that some family lines do root it does depend how snub nose they are they do have quite a snub nose and so the more snub their nose is the more their mouth will reach the ground first but first and foremost they are pigs and they will dig so we have found that over the winter was the worst um, when the ground is really soft and there's not so much grass around they will start digging for grubs and worms and even just the roots of the grass they'll get in there and dig it all up but as soon as the spring growth happened they pretty much stopped digging and have gone back to eating grass so what we are planning on doing here on out is for the winter time we're going to have a sacrificial area that the pigs can just go nuts in and over the winter we'll either bring them forage um, and also feed them a grain ration and then as soon as the spring growth gets back up they can go back out into the paddock because we can't afford for them to root up the entire paddock because it just takes too long for the grass to regrow we have tried putting clips in the pigs noses um, to help stop them digging and it worked for about a week and then either they dug and the clips flicked out or they dug anyway so um, apparently it's about 50 50 whether ringing their noses will actually stop them digging and to be honest for all the effort it is to put them in for them to be 50 50 whether it stops them it just we're just going to learn to manage their rooting behavior rather than trying to stop them altogether if you are raising your pigs and paddocks and you've got really good pasture with decent growth growth you can grow sort of five to six pigs per acre quite easily um, it is like with most animals really good if you could section that off into smaller areas and then be able to rotationally graze um, that gives the grass a better time to recover it means that they're going to be in longer grass so they're less likely to be eating really close to the ground and picking up parasites and things um, and also they're less likely to root if the grass is nice and long for them they'll need access to some decent water I'll show you the water that we have for them um, and in the hot weather they would love to have a uh, wallow to sort of well wallow in really a big muddy blob for them to help keep themselves cool as you can see they've got quite a thick furry coat they are really hardy They're, they don't get sunburnt easily uh, but it does mean that they can get quite hot in the weather so giving them uh, somewhere muddy but they will make a massive mess so just be aware of that some people just prefer to hose them off a couple times a day um, and the pigs love it pigs are really social creatures and if you're going to keep one you need to keep at least one more um, and if you can't keep one more then keep them with something else so they get on really well with goats or sheep pigs and horses are a really bad mix usually so probably best to avoid that uh, or you can have them right up next to the house and keep them with your dogs so up here you can see the cooney coonies are actually hanging out in my food forest which is completely overrun with grass but for the most part they are leaving my herbs alone they mostly leave my bushes alone they do rub their bums all over my trees so some of the younger trees I've had to stake because they keep rubbing on those um, and I have fenced off the beehive because they were trying to rub on that too and I'd hate for them to knock that over and for my bees to swarm but for the most part they just hang out in here and eat the grass and have a grand old time and then right next to here is the paddock which I just leave stringed string the gate open so that they can get into their shelter and their uh, water and then at night time we lock them into their paddock so what we have at the moment we've got down the hill in the orchard area we have got sticks bricks and straw and they're our breeding trio they're still young hopefully next year we might get some babies from them and then up here we've kept maple and banana they're separate they are going to be our meat pigs so we do keep them separately because they need fed differently um, and we don't want our breeding pigs eating huge rations of grain and getting, getting fat. 
basically. So we have these three areas that we can rotate them around um, and we at the moment have plenty of food for them. Uh, we did at one point try and keep these guys in with an electric fence and usually pigs are pretty good with electric fence um, but these guys worked out, particularly Banana, she's our brat, she worked out if she just ran the electric fence you'd only get zapped once and then you were out. Um, so of course she taught that to everybody else. So the electric fence has been a bit of a disaster um, but what we have found is that if we have a netting fence behind it the electric fence will keep them off the netting so they're not beating the netting up um, and, but the netting stops them running through the electric so the combination works really well. I know a lot of people will raise their uh, pigs on portable like poultry netting but a pig netting version um, and I think that would probably work really well. I think the problem was that they knew they could run between the wires um, and so once they started doing that they just they just took off. Um, so the very first time that we brought them home um, our boar ran straight out the front fence and up the road and I think that was the first time that they worked out that actually if you just ran you could get straight through. So what we've ended up doing, most of our uh, paddock fencing is what we call sheep netting um, and so we have got just rolls of chicken wire that we've folded so it um, goes from about I don't know, thigh height um, down probably two feet high um, and then one foot across the ground so I'll show you that. So this particular row here we do just have electric wire but if they get into the air there's nothing bad that they can do and there's just a couple of trees and then behind there is netting anyway it's our fence around our um, driveway that's dog proof as well so that's probably the only one that we've got that's just hot wire but this is what we've done along most of our fencing um, so you can see we've got um, sheep netting which is the one with the sort of grids I guess the squares that are netted um, the top one is a hot wire that's for the goats and then we've just got this chicken wire that goes down here and then it bends in underneath the grass so of course the grass has all grown up through it and anchored it down really well when we first put it in we've held it down with those wire pegs that you use uh, for anchoring down weed matting so we've just done that right around their paddocks um, and it's been really effective and the other upside to it is it's right around our orchard as well and it's duck proof well our ducks don't fly so it's duck proof and our chickens don't go through it either so um, it's been really helpful for keeping the ducks separate stopping them running away because they were running out our front fence and disappearing and this is what we've done for water for the pigs um, really really simple this is just one of those big blue barrels that you can get um, most people manage to get access to them um, and then it's just got this black doofa I can't remember what it's called what I did was threaded a rope down in through the top and out through this hole that I made and then that gave me the ability to slide the piece down um, the inside and pull it through and then screw this one on the outside oops am I pointing the right direction no um, screw this on the outside and then I've just added extra silicon and then this is just a pig nipple so the piggies just chew on that and the water comes gushing out. So we have one of those up here and we have one down in the orchard as well for the other pigs. And I'll show you their shelter. Now this is the little shelter that we made when we first got the girls as piglets. Um, I'll link a video to it. It worked really well for just the piglets when they're little, really quick and easy to put together. And here look, this is the rooting damage that they did um, I don't know if you can tell but that's like as deep as my hand um, and it's only just recovering so you can imagine if they had managed to do that over the entire paddock our paddock would still be really struggling so thankfully we got them out of here um, and stopped them rooting it up so that the paddock has recovered and now it has lots of luscious long grass. Now this is their hodgepodge little house it's nothing to write home to write home about I am about to grab some more straw for them, they keep flicking it all out everywhere but they just um, hang out in there. Um, it's waterproof and it's windproof and it gives them somewhere to lie out of the sun and the guys down the hill have something similar hodgepodge together, it's just some pellets and some spare tin that have been put together to make something that they can shelter in and snuggle in when it's cold.
Now honestly, I never saw myself as a pig farmer, but I actually love these guys and I really can't wait until our girls um, eventually have babies of their own because they are so cute. They're the cutest little things. They're having a little tiff. Um, if you're considering getting pigs on the homestead and you're not sure if you want them, I do really recommend that you give Cooney Coonies a try if you can. They're quiet, they're gentle, they're really easy to raise, they're hilarious to watch playing. Um, they eat lots of grass, they don't cost much to feed, and you can employ them to do the pig things that you need pigs to do, like clearing um, under bush, especially if you're trying to turn it into some silver pasture or something. Um, they are good at tilling the ground up if you need them to break in some garden plots or something. Throw some, do, uh, throw some food on the dirt and let them have at it. It means you can breed your own and sell extras and it can become a sustainable, sustainable meat source for you or you, if you don't want to have them as meat, if you want to have them as pets that's fine too. I hope you found that video really useful. If you have hit the like button, consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food. We'll see you in the next one.